community service for a lot of different reasons. She's always enjoyed serving in the community, but her love affair with service increased dramatically after her daughter was diagnosed with lymphoma. Their family was bombarded with wonderful organizations willing to give up their time, support, resources, and love. Her family was amazed at all these organizations being so willing to give so much during a difficult chapter of her family's life. She was even labeled as a Harvey hero for a group effort to help the hurricane victims. Kemi is the mother of five children, a wife of 17 years with a bachelor's degree in marriage, family, and human development. She has lived all over the United States and overseas, but has enjoyed Houston life for the last eight years. Beyond serving in her community, she loves gardening, creating whole grain breads and treats, working with her church, and spending time in the great outdoors with friends and family. And we will turn the time over now to Cami Ford as she presents to us service smiles and oh and I family and family a, a happy correlation awesome yes. thank you Jana thanks thank so much you. so um, just a couple of things if you have any comments or questions please feel free to type those in the chat box Jana will be monitoring that uh, throughout the presentation so uh, like Jana mentioned. Four years ago, let me get my screen shared here. Um, let's uh, get this on board here. There we go. Um, four years ago, my daughter, this is my family, was diagnosed with lymphoma. And for anyone that has had a loved one in the realm of cancer, the cancer world knows this, they might recognize this as the bell ringing the bell ringing um, uh, ceremony. And so it's, it's, it was a big deal. But little did we realize that we would be the benefactors of an incredible world of nonprofit volunteer-based um, organizations that support the pediatric oncology world. And these organizations were many, many, many. And I'd like to give you a few examples. This was one, it's called Jamie's Hope. It's a local organization that has a bald as beautiful as umbrellaed under, their, under them. And they provide a professional photo shoot for anyone that has gone through uh, any sort of treatment and has lost their hair. And this is, this is my daughter. They, they have volunteers that uh, makeup artists and the photographer, professional photographer was a volunteer. The, the person that uh, let us use their land, people donated clothes and jewelry. It was a really wonderful, wonderful experience. Another organization, this one's based in Michigan, but they uh, work nationally, uh, is Children with Hair Loss. They provide wigs to any child that has lost their hair for any reason whatsoever. Super high quality wigs. We were very, very impressed with the, this one. It was her favorite one um to anyone just a wonderful wonderful organization that has lots of volunteers this is another local one candle lighters they um we have a couple projects of theirs listed on our site currently um they helped us personally with parking tokens parking if you go to the medical center downtown you know is adds up very quickly especially if you go multiple times a week a wonderful organization full of volunteers. Many of you I'm sure have heard of Make-A-Wish and they, they also have many volunteers and uh, granted my daughter's wish. Uh, this is another local one that's uh, based on the south side of Houston. It's called Chance for Hope and they every year, they cater to the teen, teen oncology groups um, and every year they host a dance, a formal dance and take the kids shopping and, and uh, make it a really fun, fun evening. And this year COVID threw a wrench in that, or excuse me, la it was last fall. Um, and so they just, pro they provided these fun baskets for all the kids. And there are many, many more. These are uh, some of the ones that we had uh, exposure to. Icing Smiles, they're an awesome organization that bakes cakes for kids um, pediatric oncology patients or their siblings once a year for whatever special occasion they would like. Um, and this is just the 
oncology, pediatric oncology world. There are so many wonderful organizations, as I'm sure many of you are aware of. Um, and I've always had a great desire to serve others and work with, with the community, but this experience brought it to a whole high, uh, new higher level. And immediately following my daughter's treatment, Hurricane Harvey hit. <laughs> so it was a whopper of a year for us. But, um, and as along with most Houstonians, we had a strong desire to help as we were able. And we not only volunteered to muck out homes um, and, and help in that regard, but my friends, good friends, and I uh, did donation drives and were able to put together hygiene kits um, and uh, cleaning buckets. And we got many people involved. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and it allowed us to feel a sense of accomplishment and connectivity that with those in our community that we wouldn't have had otherwise. It was really a great experience. Since then, I have really wanted to keep my family, my, especially my kids involved in service. And so I wanna share you how I have done that and the benefits of that. So here are a few examples. Um, my kids and I working at the Montgomery County Food Bank sorting food. Um, we, they helped me along with our church members do a uh, donation drive um, for the Montgomery County Women's Shelter. I've, my daughter has helped with my husband at a local peanut butter factory. My daughter put together, uh, did a drive for uh, teen cancer kits. She put together these bags that she called loads of love um, with her good friends and donated to Texas Children's and had a, a good experience doing that. Um, we've been involved in the community, Conroe Community Cemetery Restoration Projects. Um, and we've helped with a local school uh, Christmas event and helped wrap and shop and, and do things with that project. So, and, and then this is, uh, us working with a mobile distribution with the Montgomery County Food Bank and the Community Assistance Center. So it's possible to do these things with your children or with your spouse or with your grandchildren or friends, whoever is in your, your circle of loved ones. So I wanna ask you a question here. And aside from service, what are some relational things that you would like to improve within your family? Anything between you and your children, between you and your spouse, and we don't need to get personal here, very general, um, anything. Can you think of anything within your marriage, with kids of any age? What are some things that you would like to improve? And you can type those in the chat box if you would like, and Jana can read those off to us. All right, the first one is communication. Communication, yes. big one. I would like my children to be kinder to each other. Great, wouldn't we all? <laughs> uh, yes. How do you help them to have a greater desire to serve? Well, Quality well, time well, together well, that creates positive experiences and memories. Excellent, yeah, wonderful. Conversations with my teenager. Okay. Communication again. A sense of gratitude. Sense of gratitude. Excellent. Excellent. These are all wonderful, wonderful things that we all would like within our um, families. And I've got good news that there are many studies that um, have showed a correlation between volunteering and these positive things that we would really like to improve on in our, in our families. Um, so let me share some of those with you. Um, these are from various studies. I have a list of studies that I have gone through and I can share those references with you um, at the end. And we'll talk about that at the end, but um, they'll be listed hopefully in our booth. If not, I can email them to you individually. But so these are some things that have been shown through these studies to be benefits of volunteering together as a family. Improved communication, number one thing mentioned, improved communication. And this is specifically between parent and child. Improved ability to work with siblings and or parents. We all want that, the ability to work better. 
lower levels of depression. And this goes for anyone that is volunteering. They have a higher sense of happiness. Transmission of values. Those that, this is specifically between, to, from parent to child. So those that volunteer with their parents, those transmission of value, the, the transmission of values increases. Um, an intrinsic care for others. So compassion, those that volunteer have a higher level of compassion. And for our teenagers and children uh, that see beyond their own nose, <laughs> as I like to tell my kids, um, they have a higher level of health, physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, et cetera, mentally, they all, all improve. Um, anyone that volunteers regularly has a higher level of of physical health. And uh, one more on this page, uh, the children specifically have a higher appreciation and respect for their parents. Hallelujah. We all would love that, right? And there are a few more. The self-satisfaction, they have a higher level of self-satisfaction. The one study called it a warm glow that those that volunteered had this. Um, kids specifically get a, a, a have a skills increased, are exposed to more skills and, and, and gain broader skills and have a higher work ethic. Also, the kids specifically gain a new perspective of the world that they may not have seen previously and um, broadens their perspective. The, this is for families specifically. The younger siblings or doesn't necessarily need to be the younger siblings, but they siblings see other siblings as role models. Um, so they're able to see, see good in their siblings. Um, also, there it gives them more ideas as to what they could do in their future. Uh, and also creates bonding experiences, which was also mentioned, unification, these these volunteering experiences as well as increased social connection and it, this study specifically was talking about kind of networking so that kids were able to or even adults not specifically just children um, were able to make connections within their community for future jobs or um, other experiences um, but this is something that we really need right now especially our children i feel like in the last year and the last two gives a higher sense of purpose these kids, they need a sense of purpose. And um, this really helps provide that and a higher self-esteem. And for most children, that is very, very important. Now, these studies, they varied in um, amount of volunteer time given. So it varied from once a month to several times a month. So it, they, the benefits are there no matter um, how many times you volunteer. And then one more, these, these are benefits specifically for teenagers, those in the teenage world. And this study shows that those that volunteered this, uh, have a higher level of hope. Those that volunteered had higher level of gratitude. Another thing mentioned, and we've already talked about self-esteem is was higher and then a lower level of aggression and a lower level of delinquency. So those are um, some studies that give you some insight there. Well, uh, one of the studies said families need inexpensive and flexible opportunities to create meaningful experiences and connect with others. And volunteering provides that. It's, it doesn't typically cost anything to volunteer unless you're donating items and things, but, and it's, it's flexible in that it, you choose when and where. Um, I'm going to skip that one, but this is another study. Also, it said volunteering can be highly rewarding and beneficial to individuals. Volunteering with family can be even more rewarding in that it makes experiences more meaningful and engaging while strengthening relationships. Volunteering experiences have the potential to strengthen family ties, to enrich and educate individual family members, and create a family tradition of working together toward a greater good. And that creating those family traditions is very highly valued um, and, and greatly beneficial for any family unit. So we want these benefits. How do we make them happen? And I have a few suggestions for you that uh, we'll go over here. Uh, first and foremost, be the example. 
model the desired behavior as in any social situation we modeling the behavior it, that we want is crucial so volunteer yourself and show them how it works and then second know where to look for opportunities that's really important we i find that many um many people want to do things and participate but they don't know how to start or where to find those opportunities and that's where just serve JustServe.org comes into play. It's a, a nationwide platform where you can look for opportunities and search for opportunities specific to your uh, needs and abilities. And so, but there are many more in our area. We volunteer Houston. Um, there's volunteermatch.org and HoustonService.org. And then I have found that if I just keep my eyes open, as I'm going about in my community, I hear about nonprofits or see billboards or see flyers or hear about someone participating in something um, with a nonprofit and, and see that there are many, many, many organizations in the area. And whenever you find a nonprofit, you typically find they need volunteers. And then make an invitation. That is a crucial step. But I do think it's very important to plan ahead in that you find, you know, pick a day where your kids are off school or your husband and both of you are off of work or um, a holiday, you know, look ahead and find a day that would work for you and then um, schedule that. I also find that inviting friends, especially with teenagers, invite your teenager friend to come with, even if they don't, you know, invite them to come and they're uh, much more likely to participate happily. <laughs> and then sec uh, third here, find an opportunity that they're interested in. It caters to their interests, such as if you have a son that likes to work on cars, there's an organization locally here called God's Garage that needs volunteers to detail cars and they need uh, mechanics and other things as well, but they go volunteer and work on cars. If you have kids that like animals, find an opportunity at a animal shelter or we have, um, there's a horse sanctuary, Henry's Horse Sanctuary here in um, my area and you can go help at, at their uh, facility. Um, crafting, shopping, um, food preparation. There's uh, lots of organizations uh, that need meals donated. Um, and then talent sharing, uh, like uh, Jana and Andy were talking about previously, recording a talent. If you have a daughter or son that likes to play the piano or you yourself or, um, or sing or whatever, you can record these things and um, send them to memory facilities or uh, nursing homes because th most of them haven't been able to have people in person. And our, if you go to our Just Serve booth, there is a project specifically catered to that currently. So it's a great opportunity. Um, but be aware that not all opportunities are open to children. There are some that are specific to adults only, but there are tons of opportunities and I'm going to share some of those ideas with you here in a minute. And then sign up and follow through. I think that's the hardest part is uh, following through, but just, just do it and just serve. And then I like to take pictures and document it so that I can go and say, hey, look, remember when we did this? This was so great. Um, and then praise them. And I think this is super important. You let them know that they did something really good today, even if it was not super, didn't feel like it was super dramatic or super meaningful or made a huge impact anywhere all the the little service matters and adds up and it is good and typically i like to talk to my kids and say you know how did that make you feel how do you feel right now and it's usually positive and they recognize that it helps them and i like to share on social media too and and kind of brag on my kids and say you know they're doing good things Kids like to be praised, as do spouses. So it's good, it's good for any relationship. And then repeat. I, this is also important. Make you could make it a regular one-on-one -on -one parent night or child outing, uh, a, a date night, you know, and like I said before, traditions go a long way in a family. 
And one study that I that I read showed that the more frequently it was done, volunteering was done as a unit, the higher the positive outcomes, all of those outcomes that we listed increased as your volunteering increased. And so uh, that's fantastic. And then one other one of the other studies is talked about how serving together is a tool. It's a tool to help build your family weaknesses and help them grow and grow familial strength, not grow your weaknesses, but minimize those and grow into strengths, especially communication and problem solving skills, which I know we need to work on in my family on a regular basis. Um, and, and then, so these are some ideas for specific age groups that are actual projects that are just within my community. And I'm on the I'm on the north side. I'm in Conroe um, area, and so these are just ideas. And most of these ideas are pretty general. You can find them in other areas of the uh, Houston metro area as well. Um, so I'll just run through these real quick here. Food banks. You could un, under age twelve. Food banks. Um, you can do sorting. I know the Montgomery County Food Bank. You can be seven years old and help sort food, not in every location in their facility, but in some of them, you can be seven years old. Um, so you just need to check with those. We talked about nursing homes, doing phone calls, Zooms, um, drawing, sending in drawings or um, calls and things. Host a shoe drive. There's an awesome organization that I just learned about through Houston Together here called Soul Mission, and they have a live session tomorrow at one o'clock. They're so cool. They collect shoes, new shoes, and distribute them to kids in need. And they're right here in my community, and I had no idea. I think they're so, so cool. And wouldn't kids think that that's fun going and collecting shoes to provide for their peers potentially? I think that would be a fantastic opportunity. Um, meal prep and delivery, kids can participate. Um, and side note here, one of the studies talked about how even the young, young kids that really can't participate, but are there observing, gain these benefits as well, which I think is pretty cool. It's that modeling behavior. They see it and, and it makes a difference. So I think that that is fantastic. Um, find a grave or billion grave. Billion grave is where you go to a grave uh, a cemetery and take pictures of the headstones to add to a database. And kids, who doesn't know a kid that likes to take pictures on a cell phone? I constantly find them on mine, mostly ones I don't want. But um, and so that's fun. And find a grave is a little bit different in that you're looking for a specific headstone that someone's trying to find at a specific cemetery. My kids love this one. It's like a scavenger hunt and it's, it's fun. Host a book drive. We're doing this right now for a local uh, prison for inmates. Um, go through old clothes and gift bundle them in, to donate. That's something our kids are constantly growing out of their clothes. Um, ages 12 to 15, they typically, um, can, sometimes they can volunteer alone. Often they need a adult with them, but these are things that they can do. Uh, go and sort clothing, a, a resale donation shop, uh, make hygiene kits and donate to a assistance center. We have our uh, school district here is in high need of hygiene items right now. Um, <clears throat> role model letters. There are, there's an organization here on uh, Houston Together called Girls Empowerment Network. And they have a session at 11 o'clock on Saturday. And they need uh, people to write letters to girls age in um, grades eight through, or excuse me, th third through eighth grade. And so wouldn't that be cool for kids that are ages 12 to 15 to write encouraging, uplifting letters to these kids. I think that'd be so fantastic. Um, help at an animal sh shelter, grocery shop for needs, uh, specific needs in the food pantry. Um, work at a cemetery, helping restore the cemetery. Or shop for clothes for and, or shoes for a donation youth, youth facility. There's a local facility called Bridgeway here that is in constant need of 
um, teen specific items for their residents. And then ages 16 and up you typically opens up pretty much almost everything. Um, but there's still sometimes some um, stipulations there, but meals on wheels, food delivery, uh, help detail a car, uh, work at the ho horse sanctuary, like I mentioned before. This one's fun, uh, invite a group to provide a meal for homeless. There's an organization here called Compassion United that does breakfast in the park every, at, um, on Saturday mornings. And we've done this before and, and coordinated a group effort. Kids this age could totally do that. And it would be wonderful. And then uh, be uh, work on a phone bank, be a part of a phone bank. There's an organization here through Connective um, on Houston um, together here. They have a session at 10 o'clock on Saturday that, and they just need people to work from their home and um, call people that have requested help from the winter storm Yuri that need help with their home. And all you do is help them fill out an online application while talking to them on the phone. So really, really um, good ideas. Whoops. Um, and that, so all of these ideas, and plus there are tons, tons more on Just Serve. So and uh, adults are open to all of these plus more. So those are just some examples of of idea, specific ideas that you can look for, for different age groups and things within your area. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so let me show you how to go to Just Serve here. I'm gonna take you to the website and, and give you a quick run through. It's very simple, it's very user-friendly, but there's also, there's an app which you're welcome to download right now on your phone. It's available for both Apple and Android. Um, let me reshare, let me see if I can reshare quickly. Um, can, did my screen change? Do I need to stop share and reshare? It did not change. You'll need okay. to stop sharing and reshare. All right, I will do that. And we've had a few comments in the chat. You have some? Okay. Just yeah. FYI, the presentation, if you will leave your email, uh, I know Cammie's going to mention this at the end, but if you have to leave early, uh, just leave your email in the chat and uh, we will send you a copy of Cammie's presentation. Yeah, and some handouts and things that go along with it. That would be great. Um, so did we have any other questions or anything? No. Okay. All right. So this is the just serve website. I love this website. It is awesome. So when you come to the website, it comes right to where you can search right here. You can put in your search, um, whether your city, your zip code or whatever and search, or you can add more options here and get specific. So let's say I wanted to find a project with um, a cemetery and I just need to spell it correctly. Um, and I'm gonna increase my radius to 75 miles just to show you more, more opportunities. And you can click, you know, suitable for all ages, a group project, something you can do from home. If you want to do a donation drive, you can click that if you need wheelchair accessible or indoors, or if you want to look up a specific skill that you have, you can do that and here as well, um, or some attributes that are specific to the project as well. If you wanna work with children and youth or specifically with disaster relief, whatever, um, whatever you would like, and then you hit search. And down here, so here's all the projects that are related to cemeteries and a lot of them are billion graves and restoration and find a grave, um, things like that. So you would click on the project that you're interested in or just want to find out more information about. And oh, for some reason, the picture, that picture is not coming up, but there is more information about the project to give you uh, a better idea um, of what this one has a lot of information. And then if you um, are interested in that specific project, you could you click check it out and it will give you instructions. So in this case, you're being redirected to the organization's website. So you would click go to their website and it takes you to their website. And this is where you would um, sign up 
uh, typically and find out more information of how exactly to fulfill that project. Does anybody have any questions? It's very, it's, it's very simple. Um, and let's see, I'll go back to the main page here. Um, there you can look up by organizations here at the top or specific projects. Um, if they're disaster recovery projects, um, or if you want to see some stories about those that have volunteered with certain organizations, you can see that as well. Um, and also, if you want to contact your local Just Serve specialist, we are, uh, we're all assigned a specific geographic area. You can click About Us and go down here to the bottom of the page where it says Contact Us put your name and your email where you live and submit and that local just serve specialist will um, uh, contact respond to your request any any questions here let me get back to my powerpoint no nope. okay all right so and one last thing is just serve has a, a club a school club that we can help you initiate uh, and we have everything that you need to do that we just simply need a student or a teacher or a coach that wants to initiate it and permission from the school and uh, our local just serve specialists are happy to help um, and you can contact us through that about us on the website so uh, one last quote that i'd like to share is if this is Dalai Lama and I appreciated it. If you would like to be selfish, you should do it in a very intelligent way. The stupid way to be selfish is seeking happiness for ourselves alone. The intelligent way to be selfish is to work for the welfare of others. So yeah, uh, we did yeah. have one question. Okay, gr great. What's they, that? They want to know if you know, can the clubs be elementary level? You know, I believe, I believe they can be at any level. Um, I think if you want to start a Just Serve club, I think that that would be very possible at an elementary school level. Thank you. All right. So thank you for attending today. Um, if you want to receive the handouts that I have, which have the charts with the, um, the age, divisions of project ideas, as well as a list of the references and, and, and notes from this, this presentation. Just, you can private email, uh, send your email to Jana here through the chat privately, if you would like. Um, hopefully we will have it up and going in our booth on the Combot page, and you should be able to see it there. And, and if you're interested in going to our, our booth there, they have a, um, a just serve match. It's kind of a quiz to help find uh, a local opportunity specific to, to what you are interested in as well. If you would like to do that, it's there as well and should be pretty fun. So, um, if anybody does, has any more questions, I'm happy to answer those. And oh, our point code is here on the this last uh, screen here. It's 34364. So um, you can add that to your, your game. So thank you so much for attending. And we hope that you can go out and just serve and share, share Just Serve's mission with others. Thanks, Cammie. That was great. <laughs> Thank, thank you, you so all. much. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Excellent you job, Cami. Thank you. Yes, Cami. Thank you. Thank you. Very appreciated. Awesome. Thank you so much.